Welcome, this is the Jenkins Governance Board meeting. It's the 18th of May, 2022. Topics I've got on the agenda include news, action items, She Code Africa Contributhon, Google Summer of Code, forums and topics. Any other items that should be added to the agenda that aren't on it? Nothing I can think of. Okay, great. All right, so let's let's do the news. Oh. Look at all the people. Exactly, isn't that wonderful? So I'm gonna I'm gonna start with the news section then. So yesterday we had a plug-in security advisory. Uh, thanks to the Jenkins security team for posting it. Um, number of fixes, interesting things, CSRF. Um, et cetera. So vulnerabilities in various layers, credential exposures, all good fixes to have cross-site scripting. Um, one glaring one was the Git plugin released with a problem in it on Windows controllers. The release has been delivered to fix that problem. Sorry about that. Obviously didn't test well enough before we released it. Next piece, June LTS is coming, June 15th of 2022. Uh, Alexander Brandis is the release office or is the release lead under the guidance of Tim Jacome as release officer. He's delivered the release, the first release candidate, and it's ready for test. The change log and upgrade pull request has been submitted. We've got still a blog post that needs to be done and some other work. Kevin Martins is taking the lead on that effort. And great to see his his work on, on, on that one. Next, next item on the news is Java 11 will be required. No more Java 8 beginning June 22, 21, 2022. So that, that release we expect will drop support for Java 8 and Jenkins. That's in preparation for the September LTS that will drop support for Java 8 all as part of Jenkins Enhanced Proposal 236. Uh, we've got JIRA epics that are tracking the work thanks to Basel, uh, thanks to Adrienne Le Charpentier and others. This Java 11 phase five is a great example of, of a wonderful way to track things. I've been just amazed. Shows how we're making progress and you can see similar results for Java 17. Uh, really a cool use of, of JIRA to help us see where we're at. We've got an open topic on Jaxby that's make, making really good progress, getting ready for the Java 11 transition, plugin maintainers are receiving pull requests, asking them, hey, please, could you fix this so that you're not broken when we require Java 11? Any questions or concerns on those three items of news? No concerns, but I want to thank all of the plugin maintainers that have been so responsive in doing releases for Jack's B compatibility. That's highly appreciated. Agreed, and, and that's that's a great experience to have people respond to a to a request for, hey, here's a change. Could you look at this? Excellent. Thanks very very much. All right. Next part is the action items. And I have the action, two action items that I've made no progress on and won't make any progress on for a while. FOSDEM funds transfer from Tracy Miranda and Linux Foundation funds transfer from GSOC. Alyssa Tong on the GSOC one has provided me some helpful pointers. So I may get further traction there over the next month. I asked CDF for a survey, survey participation count on their, um, their survey and their answer was right now they have only 18 people registered for the survey. They have not sent the survey yet and not likely to send, not likely to send it until after CDCon. So there's still time to register for that survey to help them know how they can best help our project as they provide us services. Uh, if you want to increase um responses to the initial sign up uh i think the two things are we should make sure we should blast another 
the same thing you did already and just indicate why um why you should sign up because i definitely haven't signed up and i'm not really sure why i'd want to good right so let me and i think there it's a it's a good thing for me to mark um request that info from michelle and then send it out to that end it might be it might be helpful to list the services that are already being provided by the CDF. For example, one that I'm aware of is the JIRA hosting, which is a very valuable service for us. I mean, I rely on JIRA to do all of this project tracking work. But maybe if we enumerated all of these services, that might help people to think to themselves, oh, I use that. Oh, I rely on that. You know, maybe it would be good for me to provide some positive feedback about this. Good, yes, good insight. I, I wonder if it might also be worthwhile um, share any services they are considering offering because that, that may be the other is, oh, are they going to ask which services are most valuable? Then that may give us other in, insights, good. Any other items on the action items? New meeting time, our favorite topic. Oh, new meeting time. Yes, very good. So been on, Gavin, go ahead. I think this has been on three quarters of our uh, agendas over the year. Um, but it was uh, requested that the meeting time get shifted, what, three, four hours um, ahead? to i don't know i don't know but if they requested to move the meeting time a, a little bit up so that some of the um eu people don't have to deal with shifting work to get here so yeah so so i'm going to ask those who are here any objections from any of you if we were to shift this meeting three hours later for those who are from from the eu for their benefit Later or earlier? Later, truly later. No, earlier is bad for them because it collides with their work. Okay. Okay. So they intentionally wanted to put it in in what for me sounds like the dark of the night. Bruno, with you being in Europe, it's probably your best gauge. What time is it now for you in Europe, Bruno? It's 7 p.m. Okay, so the proposal is would put it at 10 p.m. European and that's after Oleg's putting his little one to bed and <laughs> give, yes, gives him time to, to do it. So he's it's intentionally later in the day that way. Okay. So I take, so let me call for, I need to see thumbs up to say yes, if you're okay with that suggestion for three hours later. Either way, it's in the middle of my work day, so it doesn't matter to me. Okay, great. Okay, and I'm going to assume those that I don't see a thumbs up for that you're okay, you're, you're not casting a vote. So we're going to say that yes, this is approved. And Mark, move the calendar item. Three hours later. Good. I will do that. Any other action items I missed? Okay, next topic then. She Code Africa Contributhon. We've entered the final reporting phase that will last for roughly two weeks. Uh, then we'll do a concluding blog post on Jenkins.io. The posts on community.jenkins.io are a reminder how much easier it is to post to community.jenkins.io than to create a blog post. So here is Peace, Peace Okafor's uh, concluding post, nicely formatted, good head, headings, etc. Um, here's the post from Nafisa, our project manager, and we're looking forward to four other posts on community.jenkins.io because it's public. They'll also use the same post for their submission to She Code Africa for the, their final project summary. So Gavin, thank you again for community.jenkins.io. I mean, it wasn't me, but that, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Google Summer of Code was the next topic. Um, they'll announce their selected projects this Friday, May the 20th, 2022. We're um, quite optimistic. 
that Jenkins will be chosen. We had four or five projects that we had submitted as ideas with mentors, with good solid project plans, with good candidates. And so we hope, we don't know how many of those will be chosen and we won't know until they officially announce, but we hope that uh, will be chosen and we look forward to running those throughout the summer. Any questions on Google Summer of Code? Okay, next topic then, Gavin, forums and topics. Yeah, the only one that came to mind, I have not been totally engaged this week, is that the um, Crowdin discussions, some, there was, yeah, eight plugins currently using it. And, you know, that looked like really exciting to me. I think it is. And, and if we look here, Bruno is a, has been doing great things. You can see his, you. his icon <laughs> here to thank you very much, Bruno, for the French language translations. We You're see welcome. multiple contributors, not just from Bruno, but from Chinese native speakers uh, offering, offering translations. So the experiment's looking quite good. Now we still need, we've still got some, some gaps there. One of the gaps is internationalizing a plugin is not as straightforward as it should be because the documentation is, is behind what the current preferred practices are. And so one of the things I hope to do is in the doc SIG, we hope to put better documentation about that internationalization process so that people do it right the first time as they work through their, their plugin development. Okay, Mark, if ever you think I can help on this subject with you, you know, peer uh, working on that, um, count me in. Oh, good, thank you. Yes, Bruno. I've, and, and I think we'll be discussing it tomorrow during Doc's office hours. So if you want to join us for office hours tomorrow, that'd be great. Uh, we'll try to, okay. Great. And Gavin, any other topics there? I know we've got Contributor Summit from my side. Nothing comes to mind. I know Basil, was it Basil or Basil? Uh, Basil. Basil. Basil had the whole thread about um, Java 11 that you touched. So um, there has been a couple posts across the mailing list about interest in translations, but I, they got, they're in weird locations, so I don't think they got touched. Uh, yeah, the docs mailing list had a comment about translation tools. Yeah, and some I think some of those are actually as much internationalization as they are local as they are in translation. So yeah, good. Um, I do notice there is a, the last few versions have had a bunch of, of Jenkins have had some issues on the forums. People have complained about a couple of issues over and over again, mostly not reading the upgrade guide. So I don't think there's a lot we can do about it. Uh, yeah. Well, I monitored the Jira regressions yeah, dashboard pretty up with closely. Jira. So if, yeah. if people are experiencing a problem, they can vote on the issue in Jira and we'll actually see it on our dashboard. Yeah. There's, um, there's a lot of watchers. The, the thing is people are like, especially in chat going, I have this long stack trace and it my thing doesn't work. And you're like, yep, sounds like a bug. You should report a Jira. And they're like, but I want it fixed now. And you're like, yep, you should report a Jira. Yeah, I've, I've often found, found myself linking to the page on filing issues, which is a good place to start. Yep. Um, and I, I mean, on a personal level of that, I do want to write up a um, can response for the forums and maybe even for the chat. Oh, there is a board topic, yes. Uh, I want to create a can response for just uh, uh, something like I see you have a difference between environments. These are how you can debug it. You know, like how to print AMV and stuff like that. But and that's not a bug per se. That's just something you know stopgap. But there are I've seen a couple posts last couple weeks about people saying so and so is broken, and you're like, yeah, you have to 
So maybe we can make, I don't know how we could do it as a, on a board level, but try to make it easier for people to know that bugs are probably better than chat rooms. Yeah, so, I foresee this being a continuing issue because we're making a lot of changes in the next LTS in the UI. Yeah. And also with Java 11 being required, I could see that being another possible yeah. generator of support requests. And Mark has been saintly in how many times he's replied, do not download a new WAR file, run your YUM update. Do not download a new WAR file, run YUM update. By the way, do not download a new WAR file. We saw one on chat today, which is someone was logging into Docker containers and updating their WAR files on Kubernetes. And you're like, how did you even get to that level? Yes, yes. That, that that was isn't those aren't those kind of things really cool? You you decoded a way to go inside the container, yeah. replace the war file in the container. Wow, that's yeah. cool. That's Stop not doing the word that. I would use. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but there was one, so I just had it a second ago. Oh, there was a thread on help desk I saw a while ago about bridging IRC and Gitter so that people don't have to hang out in both. And I think that's actually a good idea. Um, the reason I think the board should be involved is I don't know who other than Mark has a min to Gitter. And we need someone with a min to Gitter has to be the one that approves and talks to people. So I suspect because I'll end up doing the work, I should probably get a min to Gitter. Okay, yeah, so this would, this would basically allow the the Jenkins and the or the Jenkins infra and the Jenkins release channels on IRC to be visible through Gitter as well. Uh, that's not the point of it, but it could be done. Yes, the the point was to make the Jenkins IRC channel and the Jenkins Gitter channel talk to each other, so that you know oh. someone who wrote in one could see it in the other. I see. Because right now it's split, and some people are in one, some in the other. Got it. Okay. Thanks. Anything else on on forums and topics, community topics? When can we delete Blue Ocean? No, that's a bad question. Never mind. <laughs> Wait a sec. First, we need to delete Evergreen. If we're gonna, if we're talking about deletions, let's delete delete the things that are actually not being used. And Evergreen was actually shut down a year ago. Like yeah, except down, it's still down. on. It's still on the website. It's, oh, maybe. Like... I was just looking at the forum post, and someone's saying about Blue Ocean was broken or changing the URLs. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Anything else? Um. No, but also, uh, I kind of want to push heavier for forums instead of mailing lists just I, like i'm trying to centralize we we've had an, an ongoing issue for years where everything is so spread out there's stack overflow there's irc there's gitter there's forums there's mailing lists there's websites there's twitter there's linkedin you know and anyone needs help picks one and probably not the right one because only half the people are there um as much as I would love to see the developers mailing list move to the community site, um, I'm thinking it might be worth just moving the other ones. So like docs right now is pretty heavily not using the mailing list. So it might be a good one to be like, hey, we're shutting down posting, please use the forms. You know, or maybe there's ability in, in discourse to do a read only a clone of the mailing list so anyone who posts to the forums would get a monitored post to the topic i don't know it was just something that i'm like at some point we should probably have a discussion about this hmm. good but like infrastructure the mailing list isn't really used um it's moved most of the stuff has moved to help desk um and then a few things left over in the infra list the ux one um is definitely not used and those are the ones i'm on i'm sure there's more mailing lists than that That might help explain why I didn't get any replies to the last posts that I made on the UX and docs mailing lists, because I yep. wasn't aware that I needed to make those on the community site. I don't know I, if the community site is used either for them, but they're almost entirely in the, the office hours or the getters. 
So at very least, docs the description on the list should be updated or a post to it, a pinned post maybe or something, just to explain what people are wanting to do with it. Yeah, so so I could see I could see putting a a tombstone posting on the docs mailing list saying, hey, we're moving to we're moving to community.jenkins.io. That one that one I could see easily. Um, same for infra and UX. Would that be enough, or Gavin, what, are you envisioning something more? I, I don't know. It was just something I was idly thinking about. I think a tombstone would be a good first start. The tombstone would only really be effective if we also made those lists read only, because otherwise, it's all too easy to not read that tombstone message and mm -hmm. continue posting without realizing that you're posting into a def, effectively a def null channel. Um, we can look into it. There might even be a way to do like an autoresponder to say, hey, this mailing list is retired. Yeah, now, now in terms of central, I'm not sure I'm really effective at managing list, mailing list kind of communications on community.jenkins.io. How does that work, Gavin? And would you be willing to do a tutorial at some point to, to I guide me through? make it any complicated and it's just you know we have a category for docs you're already using it to post meeting minutes just that's it right it's just oh okay so just anything posted to the so okay so now i've got to show it just to be sure so what you're saying is anything that has if i look for doc sig yeah i mean that works too the thing Auto is sig docs you know my my concern is that if someone has a question or they post mm -hmm. the wrong space it's impossible to do anything about it. You know, we had that issue for the longest time. People would post to infra a mailing list asking about their install. And you're like, nope, you got the wrong spot. And that's it. That's the end of the conversation. At least putting it to the forums, we can be like, nope, we're moving it to this category. You know, we can ping someone by putting it all in one spot. You know, it helps. You know, if someone has a question about the Git plugin on IRC, Mark's not there. I could be like, hey, join Gitter and hope for the best. You know, but the more we centralize it, the less we have to redirect users later. Right. Okay. So, so here's an example of a thing that was, was originally started as one thing, but became another good. Yeah. Okay. So, so SIG docs, we could, we can tag them that way and they'll be there. Yeah. Just any posting here that's docs related would be okay. And we would put the tombstone yeah. on the, on the docs mailing list. The okay. nice thing about the tags is you can be in multiple, the categories, you can only be in one, but you can move categories really easily and very visibly. Okay. And then uh, I'd like, I mean, I, I could do a uh, demo at some point in the future, but the nice thing about discourse is you have very fine notification controls. So I'll, just for everyone's uh, thing here on the right of their page, you have that little bell, right? Um, you can actually control what, how your notification will be on, oh, on this tag. So you're actually selected on the SIGs doc tag. So you could be like, I'm watching that tag. You will get every email about anything in that tag. Or you could leave it at first post. So the first time someone posts in that tag, they get an email, but not every reply to it and so on. Like you can control it. Like it's, it's all man manageable in your preferences as well. You don't have to go to each tag and do it manually. Mm -hmm. But like it's it's very customizable in the, the same Jira sense of it, right? And that's one thing that the mailing lists don't have is you either get all of it or none of it. So yeah, I just think centralization is better, not necessarily that the forms are the best place. Great, I like that. We could, we could make a similar comparison to the multiplicity of issue trackers that are in yes. use. Right? Because and there's, there's a lot of, it's hard, for example, to manage projects when those projects span both JIRA and GitHub issues to track the same projects. Whereas if, if we were using one, system instead of being spread out you know, yeah to track everything yeah and we were trying to abstract that as much as we could in the plugin site because people were doing it anyways um so that you can very easily you know have a list of issues you don't have to think about where it is but i agree that was one of the issues we i mean even years before most of the people on this call are were around people were wanting to use github and we're like it should be one or the other not both both of the mess and same with chat same with mailing list, same with everything mm. And as a very uh, new uh, Jenkins user, I find it really difficult to interact with people within Gitter. 
and there are so many channels. I think last year when it was a uh, contributor summit, uh, you listed 97 GitHub channels, I think. Uh, it's just well, impossible to do uh, something seriously with that many channels. So having a more centralized system, yes, would be very useful for a young timer. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I think so. So I'm going to keep trying to push it, but I'm also not aggressively doing it, and we probably could get more aggressive about it. Uh, well, so it, it feels like a, a great excuse for a topic for Doc's, Doc's office hours as a test case yeah. to say, hey, let's talk about it and see if we're really ready. Because you're right, the Doc's mailing list is quiet. It's certainly not the central place for conversations about Doc's. That's office hours. And commu off asynchronous communication could move to community.jenkins.io very easily. Yeah, OK, here we go. Here's my favorite. Oh, I'm going to put it in, in chat. There's the thing I, I collated last year. <laughs> so like I said, I want to try to centralize that as best as possible because it's impossible to know where to go. Right. Yeah, that number. Good. For all the Gitter channels, I'm sorry, are they called channels or rooms? I guess they're called rooms. Yeah. Um, maybe it might help if we define a naming scheme. For, for example, you know, x-sig is a namespace for these official special interest groups. And, you know, you have like x-plugin. Yeah. Be, you know, for, and that, so we could, you know, name these chat rooms or name these rooms after the corresponding repository or organizational entity. And that might help put a limit on how many of these things there are if they're more closely related to some yeah. other entity. Yeah, I'm, if it was, if it was purely, if I could be like dictatorship and choose, it would be a Gitter matrix for any live chat, a community site for, um, for everything else. And then, you know, I don't really care, but Jira or GitHub for issues, like I said, one or the other. Um, honestly, if, if we could integrate things a little bit better, we probably wouldn't even have to worry about what the answer is, you know, but I, it's so hard. It's be hard to dictate this, you know, because it's so spread out. So the best we can do is fix the outliers and make the more people who are using community site, the more we can put onto it and the easier it is to migrate things to it. So that's why, because Mark likes it, docs is my first order of business, but yeah. I think renaming channels if we can. I don't know if we can even rename channels. I, I don't, well, I haven't seen a lot of growth in the number of Gitter, Gitter rooms that are out there. It's rather that there are still many. I, I keep so, 10 or 15 on my screen. So I'm, I'm not seeing a naming convention helping much as much as inspiring people to go elsewhere for useful things. Let's, let's just say a new Gitter channel was created today, Mark. How would you find out? I, I would not. So how would you know if there are new channels or not? Um, oh, fair point. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know when 79 was calculated. I don't know how we did it either. So yeah, I, either way, it's just, this is one of the things that's been bugging me for a long time and I don't have a solution for. And the only solution I have is funnel people as best we can into one spot. I, I, let's... Let's do the experiment. Let's try it. I like it. Shutting down, shutting down, putting a tombstone on the, the docs mailing list should be pretty easy. And if it works and we make it read only, successfully make it read only, then, then we shift the conversations to, to community.jenkins.io and we're set. Yeah. 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 I think in the long term, we need to come up with a plan for the issue trackers because it's it's too difficult to do project management with a split yeah. view of the world. And um, there are certain f certain features or areas of functionality that are present in some issue trackers, but not others. So I think that's a really thorny problem that we're going to need to deal with at some point. Um, I don't have any thoughts on it right now. But I can I can see this becoming more of an issue in the future. 
Yeah, if you search the dev mailing list, there are big, big, big topics about which one we should use. And finally, people are just like, we're going to use both because we can't decide. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I think it is a valid topic. And it's it's a good dev list topic to, to bring as we need to discuss further. It's the dev list has been the place where the, it's been discussed in the past. Yeah. The only solution I can see is and I hate the sentence so much, is moving project management out of JIRA. So it could be, you know, there's got to be tooling that supports multiple systems. But also, I don't want to support multiple systems. So, Right. And then and, and you, you just hit it, Gavin, is, well, do we really have, yeah. Topic for developer discussion. Yeah. Any so have, other topics for today? Else. Yeah. All right. If no other topics, I'll stop the recording. Thanks, everybody. Cool.